Hello everybody and uh, welcome to week four PBA 305 uh, American Public Policy. We are, uh, ladies and gentlemen, launching into the uh, policy uh, implementation phase uh, as we continue to understand uh, policy and, and uh, how we not only uh, have gone through the formulation of policy, the, uh, the uh, development of policy um, through the multi multifacets of, uh, of legislation, but finally now that the question arises, what do we do once this policy is created and how do we implement it? Um, we introduced the metaphor of the house last week and Sure enough, um, we built a strong foundation and a strong policy, but uh, we now have to uh, make it livable. We have to uh, build the framework. We have to uh, furnish it. We have to uh, uh, put up the drywall and and uh, and make it a home that our constituents can live in. So uh, now that we have laid that groundwork. We're looking at how we can actually uh, make these policies work. So really a, um, uh, a big picture takeaway as you go through this content um, is just to understand the nature uh, of, po of public policy and the environment uh, in which it operates. So. Um, first of all, the, uh, the nature of public policy here, um, as it's implemented, is that uh, it is uh, somewhat complex in that now that you um, have accomplished already a complex process, you now have to go through uh, how to functionally, operationally implement uh, the policy. Um, and as we learn, there are multiple organizations that uh, participate from the federal to the state to the local level, and even on the private side, that come together to enforce these policies um, and to implement these policies and, and others to regulate these policies. So we end up uh, with, a, with a, a complex process that is best if it's less simple, but it's not always that easy to do. Um, the environment, as we've learned, is oftentimes politically charged. Um, we have uh, gridlocks that develop. Uh, for example, last year when the budget um, couldn't pass, and as a result of the uh, different sides of, of uh, the House and the Senate, um, unable to reach agreement, the government completely shut down. So uh, not only um, was the uh, you know that were these these political spheres um, uh, not cooperating uh, to allow government to do what it needs to do, but uh, but government um, wasn't allowed to implement the any kind of policy because it, it wasn't getting uh, paid to uh, and didn't have the resources to operate. So here we are now in a, uh, a situation um, in our country now where we have, um, like we've always had, political parties, um, organizations, um, the executive office, the, the levels of government. At the federal level we have multiple executive agencies. We also have uh, several independent executive agencies as we'll learn about in this chapter and also um, uh, state entities times 10 for each state uh, and um, as well as uh, multiple local uh, uh, authorities as well and entities. So. Um, just the nature and environment in which we're working 
is is very complex. It's very deep vertically as well as horizontally. Um, another uh, uh, element to this um, that we're learning is uh, just the you know looking at the responsibilities and the uh, ethics and the challenges uh, related to public policy. So. Um, First of all, a lot of the uh, the responsibilities uh, in the uh, implementation of public policy, looking at it, for example, um, uh, the uh, recent health care, Affordable Health Care Act that passed, um, sure enough, uh, Congress passed the legislation, but then it was up to the uh, federal government to, to roll it out and then it was up to the states in large part to implement. Um, we had multiple uh, affected organizations that were public entities at the local level, hospitals, um, state-funded uh, organizations um, such as the Department of State Health Services uh, in Texas and then um, also the uh, uh, health and human services at the federal level that were all uh, expected to change to adapt to these new policies um, except you have for example in Texas uh, a government that does not want to welcome that change and so you end up with a vertical application where okay, the federal government is saying it's now the law that we are going to do this. And the state is saying, well, so what? Make me. And so we have an opportunity here to see how uh, our system works and that in a lot of ways our federal, state, local system is a democratic process uh, like we learned about corporatism and neo-corporatism, um, our government as a state is still acting with a vote, so to speak, and saying whether or not it wants to implement these changes. And our elected representatives are acting in certain ways. Not everybody feels that way, but they... Uh, were elected, and this is, you know, that's the uh, opinion that they are uh, working with. So, the opportunity here in real time, in real life, is to see how our state government deals with controversial issues, how the federal government deals with a rogue state, so to speak, that is uh, uh, very independent and, and doesn't necessarily want to follow the lead that the federal government is, uh, is giving. And then also um, how private organizations are uh, influencing the state in a lot of ways uh, to, to give um, uh, pressure to local politicians, um, state politicians, to um, uh, say, hey, this is going to hurt our business. You know, we don't want to change things right now. We think this is a bad idea. And... Um, that influence, that persuasion, is uh, is very strong in our state here. Um, we also have uh, countries like our states like Vermont, like uh, uh, Massachusetts, um, that are have been very, you know, okay, here we go, let's do this, and they're creating healthcare exchanges and. Uh, um, uh, the hospitals and the insurance companies are are joining up and and uh, um, getting on board, and then you also have the uh, the citizens that are signing up for affordable health care online, and um, so it's a very uh, um, across our country, it's a very um, unique and diverse sphere of uh, of uh, activity in that in the way that that we've responded to this legislation. 
so um, we've uh, also um, uh, regarding the ethics and the, the challenges related to public policy um, the new challenge is to get the, the policy uh, uh, rolling, to get the, the change made, to get the law enforced or implemented. And so here we are in a situation where um, who, you know, at, at, at what point, um, for example, to go back to the one we're, we're, uh, we're using, the theme with federal government policies applied where states uh, are seeking to uh, follow or not follow the rule but in one way or another they have to respond the um, state officials have to decide is it ethical right now for me to disobey this law um, and the law says that, hey, they don't have to do it, so they're going to work within the framework that they've been provided. Um, so one ethical consideration is, are they being overly influenced by privatized medicine? Um, another ethical consideration would be um, that the state has the lowest... Uh, I'm sorry, the highest rate of uninsured individuals in the country. So, to what extent are we leaving behind uh, people without insurance when the choice that's being made is to not participate in these policies and uh, regulations? So um, those are some ethical considerations. Um, the uh, uh, some other uh, questions, maybe at the opposite end of the spectrum, is why would somebody deserve to get free health care if they're not, uh, or to get health care if they're not working or paying for it? And that is very much a viewpoint, a uh, conservative viewpoint in the state of Texas. Um, so we we have um, lots of different viewpoints, uh, uh, butting heads, um, and the executive administration at the federal level is applying uh, social change policies that uh, parts of the country aren't willing to accept uh, or adapt to. So. Um, there's a uh, therein lies the the rub and the challenge, in that not everybody is going to cooperate. So, how do you get multiple agencies, multiple levels, multiple uh, spheres to come together and work together? So that is really the challenge um, in implementing policy. There is a uh, never really just a surefire simple way to just say, "All right, let's do this. Everybody's on board. Let's uh, let's roll." Um, it's there's there's always competing personalities, uh, organizations, responsibilities, um, just general uh, human nature things um, where uh, um, people just just tend not to always collaborate. However, when it works, uh, it, it works and it's, and it's a, a very beautiful thing. Um, so, uh, anyway, um, I hope everybody has fun with this and, um, kind of gets to, gets to see a lot of the fun complexities of policy and, um, and at the same time, um, uh, as we move forward to building our, our house that our constituents can live in in the policy world, um, hope you all have a great week and uh, hope you've had a great weekend and hope all is well. Looking forward to talking to you all later. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm uh, uh, available and, and here to talk with you. All right, thanks. Bye.